For the instrument tie surgeon's knot exercise, you will need the following items. A needle driver, suture material, a foam pad to practice on, skin forceps or forceps with teeth which are not shown, heavy suture scissors which are also not shown, and scissors from a suture removal kit. There are two techniques to holding the needle driver. The first technique is the palming method, in which you open and close the needle driver by using the thener and hypothener eminences of your palm. The second technique is to insert your thumb and ring fingers into the rings of the instrument and use your index finger to stabilize it. Hold the forceps between your thumb and index and or middle fingers. To avoid injury by handling the needle with your fingers, use the forceps to pick up your needle and load it in the needle driver so that it is perpendicular and at the tip of the instrument. The needle should be loaded so that it is at the midpoint to two-thirds back from the tip of the needle. To begin the instrument tie, grasp the left wound edge with the skin forceps and evert the edge. With the needle driver held in the prone position, hold the needle so its tip is perpendicular to the skin. Starting with your wrist prone, enter the skin and supinate following the curvature of the needle to feed it through the tissue. Release the needle driver, then pronate to pick up the needle from the middle of the wound. Make sure to supinate as you bring the rest of the needle through the tissue to avoid any undue trauma. To adjust the needle position in the needle driver, grasp the needle with your forceps and load it appropriately. The needle should be at the tip and perpendicular to the instrument and loaded at its midpoint to two-thirds back. You may approximate the line of your next bite by making a mental note of where the suture material comes straight across the wound. Now grasp the tissue on the opposite side and evert the skin edge. Enter the tissue inside the wound with your wrist prone, carefully supinating to follow the curvature of the needle as it exits the tissue. Release the needle, pronate to pick up, and supinate, continuing to follow the curvature of the needle. At this point, you may place your forceps down or practice holding on to them as you complete the instrument tie. Pull the suture material through the wound gently to create a short tail on the right side, which may be the patient's left side if he or she is supine. Note, there is now a short strand and a long strand of the suture. Hold your needle driver parallel to the wound in the middle of the two strands. Lift the long strand up, over, and around the instrument to create one loop for a square knot and two loops for the first throw of the surgeon's knot. Open your needle driver and grab the distal aspect of the short suture tail. Pull it through the loops and then cross your left hand over your right to lay the first throw flat. We have recreated the short and long strands of the suture, though now they are on opposite sides. Hold your needle driver in the middle of the two strands. Lift the long strand up, over, and around the instrument to create one loop for the second throw. Open your needle driver and grab the distal aspect of the short suture tail. Pull it through the loop and lay it down in the opposite direction to the first throw. For the third throw, again place your instrument in the middle of the wound. Lift the long strand up, over, and around the instrument to create one loop. Open your needle driver and grab the distal aspect of the short suture tail. Pull it through the loop and lay it down in the opposite direction to the previous throw. 
Repeat the same technique for the fourth throw. To cut the suture, approximate the two tails by holding them up together. You may also use the needle driver as a clamp to do this. Hold the heavy suture scissors in the prone wrist position with your thumb and ring fingers in the rings of the instrument. Please remember that these are the Metzenbaum tissue scissors and not the scissors you will be using in the OR to cut suture material. When it is time to remove the stitch, you may do so by lifting up the tails of the knot with forceps which are provided in a suture removal kit along with suture scissors. Slide the blades of the suture scissors underneath the loop of the knot and cut. Once removed, the knot may be inspected to observe its two tails, the knot, and the loop which was cut. Careful inspection ensures that no suture material is left in the patient.